Welcome back to part three of this nav mesh tutorial. We're now going to add in obstacles onto our terrain and we're going to put trees on there, which is obvious enough. And then you'll see how your nav mesh agent or chomper in this case makes his way around those. All right, so what we first of all need to do is to create some trees. Now in the folder you should have from the resources there is a tree prefabs and if we open that up you'll find a whole bunch of trees. So let's just click on one. I've got one. Let's open that up and have a look what's on there. Now you'll see that these trees have level of detail put on them which is fine. That's not going to bother us. But what they all need essentially is a nav mesh obstacle. And you can see I've already put one of those on there for you. So each of these trees has a nav mesh obstacle component. To add one, you just hit add component and then find the obstacle. Now the green box that you can see sitting around the tree in the scene is its um, obstacle is that a word? Uh, it's the boundaries of what's going to make it an obstacle. It's how much room it's going to take up on the nav mesh itself. So you can adjust that to however big, high, uh, wide you want. Now in this case, Chomper's pretty much a ground dwelling thing. So it's just going to be wandering around on the ground. It's not going to get up to any certain height. So therefore we just need to define the perimeter around each of the trees with that box. However, if height was an issue, then you'd want to lift that box up as well. So you'll find that on all of the trees. Okay, so let's add some trees. Now you could just drag and drop these trees onto the landscape, but we're going to procedurally place them with a little bit of script because that's sort of one of my favorite things to do. Let's go back into our assets folder to create the script. It's a C sharp script. And let's call it World Manager. Now we're also going to go into the hierarchy and create a empty. Let's call that the world when it comes up. And let's drag and drop our World Manager code onto there. I like to do this first up because I usually forget to do it at the end if I don't do it as soon as I create it. All right, so now we're back in the code and what we need to do is to add in our tree prefab so that we can create them. So in here let's go public game object array trees and then we'll also go public terrain because we want that terrain like that. Okay now don't worry about these um, red lines that I'm getting all over the places. Sometimes my Visual Studio just loses its connection to Unity and decides to complain about things. Uh, anyway, we'll just go with it for now. What we need instead of update is a plant trees method. So void plant trees. And in here we're going to plant trees all over the landscape by a nested for loop which will move across the train in the X and the Z directions, find a spot, figure out how high that spot is and, you know, plonk the tree there. So in order to do that, you actually need to get hold of your terrain data. Now, if you've taken my procedural generation with Unity course, then you'll have looked at the terrain structure in Unity with quite some detail. And we actually do cover putting trees procedurally on a train probably a little bit more elegantly than we're about to do here. We're just going to do it sort of haphazardly rather than with any plan. So we call the terrain data terrain data equals terrain dot terrain data. Now I'll just get rid of that data because we don't want that in there. Okay, now next line, we want some kind of spacing between the trees and you could make this random, but for here I'm just going to go tree spacing equals 10. Then we need two for loops, one for x, so 4 int x equals 0. x is less than, in this case, terrain data dot size 
dot x and then x plus equals tree spacing. We also need the same thing for the z direction. So int z equals 0. z is less than terrain data dot size dot z and then z plus equals tree spacing. Okay, then inside of here, what we've got at this point is x and z values that are going across the terrain using the terrain's data, which will tell you its x value, which is one of its directions along the flat, and the z, which is its other direction along the flat. Now let's create a position for each tree based on its x and z. So first of all, create a vector 3 called pos equals new vector 3 and that's going to be at x, 0 and z which will currently set all your trees to be at 0 which is not where you want them. You want them to be at the height of the terrain at that particular x, z coordinate. So what we do is we set pos y's value to equal to train dot sample height. So that method of the terrain will get you the height at any particular location and we give it our pos or our vector 3 and that will then reset it as far as the y is concerned. Then we're going to grab a tree randomly out of our tree array that's at the top. So int i equals random dot range of 0 to trees dot length. Okay, so that's going to generate a value for i, which will be 0, 1, 2, 3, up to however many trees you've got minus 1. And then we can instantiate that particular tree. So we'll go instantiate trees i at pos with a quaternion dot identity, no particular rotation. And there we have it. So this will put pl plants, trees all over your um, environment at the right height. Now, as we will see a little later, if your tree has quite a large base on it, it might sit out awkwardly from the surface. Now, there's nothing you can do in this particular case, though um, you could do a bit more testing and stuff to actually push the tree down. Again, something we talk about in the terrain course. Okay, so let's run this up in start. So plant trees, which will now add trees everywhere. Save that. Let's go back to world. So select that from the hierarchy. Now where it's got trees, we want to drag and drop all of our trees over into there. And the quick way to do that is actually lock that in the inspector. Then go into the tree prefab folder and just shift select all of them drag and drop them onto that trees and that will put them all in there for you. Now unlock it, it's always a good idea otherwise you might forget that you had it locked and um, grab your train as well because it needs to know about the train and drop that into that position as well. Okay we're ready to test this out. Press play and we will get masses of trees and I can't do anything about us actually spawning in the middle of a tree. But now, as we walk around these things, watch good old Chomper. And he will follow us around because he can't go through them because of his collider. And if we select Chomper and zoom in on Chomper over in the scene, you will see that collision box that's sitting around him. Notice it's the standard humanoid size. So if you want to change that, we just stop playing for a moment. And we're going to find Chomper again. There he is. So you can go to the Nav Mesh Agent Settings into Obstacle Avoidance. You can change the parameters, so the height of what he is there, and also the radius if you want him to kind of leave a much larger space between him and any of those trees. And you can move that. Now, what it will also do is leave a bigger space between him and any of duplicate hymns if you happen to have more than one. So we've got that set. Let's grab hold of Chomper and just control D 
and then you'll need to move them out in the scene because this will just add a whole heap of chompers. You can add as many as you like. You could also spawn them with a script and just position them anywhere that you like. They will eventually all find your player. Okay, so there's a few. Let's press play on this. And now she will have amassed an army of chompers that are going to go wherever she goes. Let's come back again so we can see this happening in the scene view. There she goes. And if she can walk straight through a tree, which she will, because she's got there's no colliders on the trees, then they're still going to have to go around it. And you can see that happening up there. Okay, so that's it. That is your nav mesh used on a terrain, agents that follow your player around, and also adding in obstacles. I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. If you want the full project, then it's available to all my Patreon subscribers. Otherwise, you can work through it and build it up uh, from the resources that I've given in the very first part one of this series. Thanks for watching. Please support the development of more superb online learning content by subscribing. And as always, visit holistic3d.com to learn more about awesome games development books and tutorials.